Hey everybody, this is Ty from K2 Data Science and Engineering. In this video, we'll set up a Twitter developer account and create a streaming server using Tweepy. Let's review the pipeline first. We are going to start with the first step of the pipeline. We will connect to Twitter's streaming API using the Tweepy package. But before we write any code, we'll need to set up a developer account. So one of the first things you'll have to do, of course, is actually have a Twitter account. So you can just create one, register, you don't have to be active. This is just our company one. And then after you've done that, you can go to developer.twitter.com and, sorry, you'll have to register for a developer account. It's a very quick process. And then after you register, you can actually go to your account name and go under apps and you'll be asked to create an application so I've already created one but if you want to create a new one you can just click create an app and then you have to put your name the description your website URL and I believe you have to say how it's being used so make sure you fill these out um, because they're necessary there's actually an approval process when you create an app so just share why you're doing this. Like say, I'm building a tutorial, I'm going through a tutorial that uses the Twitter streaming API in Python to filter tweets and so forth. So sometimes it takes a couple hours or sometimes it takes more than a day or so to get approved. So it's best to start that now and then you'll get an email notification when it's done. So when that's done, you can just go to apps and check your app and so here's my app for the filter tutorial and I can just click details and you'll just have the information here and what you'll need is this information under keys and tokens so here's my consumer API keys and you'll copy and paste those into your code or save them in a separate file and then you'll want to generate an access token and so this uh, allows your application to connect to the API. So these are hidden on my screen because they're confidential and you never want to share your API keys or your access tokens with anyone else. So let's walk through the code for our Twitter filter. So at the top we're importing Tweepy, that's a third-party package that interacts with the Twitter streaming API. Then we have daytime and then JSON. So datetime we'll use to format the time. And then JSON, it's not really necessary. The reason I use it is actually just to store my API keys in a separate file. So I have it in this config folder. So I have the key value pairs. And this line of code is merely importing the JSON. Then I'm loading that path and reading in the JSON file. And then I'm accessing the key value pairs to get the consumer key, the consumer secret, the access token, access token secret. Now, um, in order to authenticate, Tweepy uses OAuth to handle that. If you've worked in web development before, you, under you understand how authentication works and how you have to send requests and get access tokens and then exchange tokens. For now, just know that these two lines of code are necessary to authenticate um, Tweepy and Twitter and read in tweets from the stream. And then we create a new API object and feed in our auth. So we'll use that later on on the bottom of the code, but here is one of the main blocks of code. So what we want to do is we need to set up a listener. And so Tweepy has their own listener class here. Tweepy.streamListener. It's a very basic, and what we want to do is override the method. So we're going to create a subclass called StreamListener, and then we're going to modify these two methods on status and on error. So the on error is very simple. Basically, a 420 status code is when we're being rate limited. For example, most APIs, you're only allowed to make 
X amount of requests, like a thousand requests in an hour. So if we made too many requests, we would get an error message and it'd be like, oh, you need to wait another hour to make more requests. And so we're basically saying if it runs into that rate limit request, stop. If you run into any other errors, like for example, there weren't enough tweets or anything, then just keep going, keep the stream open. All right, so back to our main method on status. So status is the information for each tweet. We can actually take a look at what the status object is. I've actually just printed one out to the console and then copied it. <clears throat> so it's it's not in proper JSON format, I think it wants double quotes. But essentially what it is, it's a Tweepy API object, and then we have all these variables created at ID, source, user ID, name, description, follower account, all this stuff, profile, image, location coordinates, if there's geolocation, quote reply count, tweet count, so many things. There's almost, there's more than, there might be more than 100 variables. This is all just one status that we received for one tweet. So there's two things we want to do here. The first is actually filtering, and then the second is extracting out the data. So the filter, I could have done this later, but I basically just wanted to add this here. There's a couple other ways to do it, but one thing we want to do is avoid retweets because retweets are just the same tweet that someone wrote, someone else posted. So the status actually has a retweet status, but it's sometimes not there for tweets. I, we ran into some errors before. So basically the easiest way is just to look in the text object and see if this substring is not there. So RT at, that's how the majority of retweets are structured. It says RT at, and then the other person's username. So this block of code is saying if it's not a retweet, then create this tweet item. And what we're going to do is extract out certain properties of the status. So we're going to get the ID, we're going to get the text, so what the tweet is, and then the username, the name, and the profile image. And then we'll just have received at. And received at will be the time that we actually received it on our local computer. And then for just for presentation's sake, uh, we can print out the tweet item. And that's our custom listener. So at the, at the bottom, we just have three lines of code. We create an instance of our stream listener class. And then what we do is we pass in it the authentication credentials so that Twitter allows us to connect. And then we pass in our stream listener. So these functions are working. And then we can either just pull in the whole Twitter feed, but uh, that would be like very intense. So what we're gonna do is just do a filter and we can pass in a list of terms, either words or you can also do usernames. So here I have these brands, Warby Parker, Bonobos, Casper, Glossier, Dollar Shave Club, Allbirds. So these are the direct consumer brands that have become very popular. You can call them, they're like consumer tech companies um, and they've made a big wave. A lot of people are very interested in investing in them and, and trying their products. They're kind of taking a new perspective on traditional products. And so I, we just wanna see what people are saying about them. And then at the end, you'll notice um, I added pizza, so I really like pizza, but uh, that's not the reason why I added it. The reason why I added it is that not a lot of people go on Twitter to write about these brands. Maybe more, you could say it's on Instagram, more visual. But uh, just for illustration's sake, when I turn on the filter, it might take half a minute, it might take 10 seconds, it might take a couple minutes to get a tweet that matches the brand. So we'll just leave it running. But... Uh, so that I can show you the stream is working, I just included pizza because I feel like more people will be talking about pizza on Twitter than all the other brands combined. 
So we can save that and then I'll go to the console and run it. All right. Okay, so we're getting a lot of matches. Um, most of them are all for pizza. <laughs> As you can see, if you look at them, pizza, world fighting over pineapple and pizza, how to Google what artisan pizza is, and, and so on. So you can see it's working. And if we, if we turn off, if we take out pizza, then it probably won't present anything. We can check it out right now. can wait for the first match if it if it does it or I'll just stop that but basically the next step is to store the tweets right we just have these tweets we're just printing them out they're just not going anywhere right they're just ending up in memory and then we're deleting them but the next thing what we want to do in the following video is store it on and redis so here we have one tweet apple should buy at warby parker hashtag shower thoughts all right i hope you guys enjoyed this video the tweepy package is a bit complex so feel free to check out the documentation to learn more about the specific classes the methods in the next video we'll actually take a little detour before we store the tweets in redis We'll actually talk about sentiment analysis, what it is, what it's used for, how we can run it in Python. And then after that, we'll, we'll dive into storing it and setting up our own Redis server.